This is Denny Cherry, and welcome to Growing and Shrinking Databases. Whenever possible, we want to pre-size our database files so that file growth isn't needed or is extremely infrequent. We really don't want the auto-growth feature of SQL Server 2012 kicking in and doing a whole lot of work on a regular basis. We really want the database to just have enough free space within the database files so that nothing needs to really happen normally. Now, when we do need to grow our database files, the database files can really be grown by any size amount. There's really no minimum or maximum recommended sizes that you should use to grow or shrink your database files. Now, transaction logs, on the other hand, they need to be grown in very specific size increments because we need to minimize the number of virtual log files within the transaction log while maximizing the size of those virtual log files that are within the transaction log. Always remember that the auto grow feature of SQL Server 2012 should be used more as a safety net than as a best practice when it comes to actually growing the database files. You want to pre allocate as much space as possible when it makes sense to do so. You don't want to have a 5 gig database that has 2 terabytes of free space, but on the other hand, we don't want auto grow kicking in and growing the database on a very, very frequent schedule. Now, when setting up your data file growth, Always turn on instant file initialization whenever possible, as this is going to dramatically reduce the amount of time it takes for the database to grow. The reason for this is that with instant file initialization turned off, SQL Server 2012 has to write zeros to the data file as it's growing it. So if you're growing the database file by one gig, SQL Server has to write a billion zeros down to the hard drive. This takes some time to do pretty much no matter what kind of hard drive you have underneath the server. When setting the auto grow settings, a specific size should be used, not a percentage. The reason we don't want to use a percentage is that this can lead to inconsistent growth patterns. And in the database world, frankly, we're all about consistency. So we want to know when the database grows, it's going to grow by X number of gigs. This also makes it easier to do space planning moving forward because we know exactly how much space we're going to need when it grows. If we've got a 10 gig database that grows by 10%, that's going to grow at one gig chunk. The next time it grows, it's now an 11 gig database. So if it grows by another 10%, that's 1.1 gigs, which seems fine. But as we get into the larger databases, these numbers start getting much, much bigger very quickly. When working with a one terabyte database, if it grows at 10%, suddenly that's growing at 100 gigs at a time, which is a very large amount of space. So we would need to have that 100 gigs of space available for it to grow, because if we don't have all the free space required by the auto growth setting, the auto grow is going to fail. And if a user is trying to write to the database during that transaction, that transaction is then going to roll back and the user is going to get an out of space error message. So because of that, we always want to use that fixed size. The fixed size should be small enough that auto grow happens fast, yet large enough that we don't have auto grow triggering very often. The reason we don't want auto grow triggering very often is the more times auto grow is triggered, the more fragmented our database file gets, especially if we're in an environment where we have multiple database files all sitting on the same physical hard drive. Now, the transaction log, on the other hand, we do want to grow at some very specific sizes. We want to grow in eight gig increments. The reason for this is we need to minimize the number of VLFs that we're creating with our transaction log and maximize the size of those VLFs or virtual log files within the transaction log. If we use smaller growth increments, this is going to increase the number of virtual log files within our transaction log. And this can lead to poor performance when the system is starting up. Or if, for example, if a cluster failover or an always on availability group failover happens. Now, while we say that the log file growth should be done in eight gig increments, auto grow is probably going to get set to a number smaller than that. The reason for that is because auto grow is only going to run when the transaction log is completely full. Very frequently, the amount of time it takes to write out that eight gigs is actually going to be longer than the 30 second window that the application has before it's going to time out and throw an error message back to the end user. So because of that, we want to go for a smaller number, understanding that autogrow is not going to be running very often, but when it does, we do need to just get that log bigger in a fairly short amount of time. So because of that, I typically recommend one to two gigs of growth for the autogrow setting. But when manually doing growth on a large database's transaction log, 
you're going to want to use that 8 gig increment to do the growth. So let's go ahead and look at a demonstration and see how to actually grow the database files. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look at Management Studio and look at the GUI interface for doing this. I'm going to show you both using the GUI and using Transact SQL. To use the GUI, we go to the Properties of the Database and we click on the Files tab. Here we see an initial size column and an auto growth column. Simply change the initial size. In this case, let's increase the database size to 100 megabytes. Now we're going to set the transaction log as well. Now you can see when I click in the box, I get some little up and down arrows. Those can be used as well if you'd like to change the size by one meg at a time. We can then click on the auto growth ellipse button here and get the pop up dialog box for the auto growth setting. Once this dialog box appears, simply change the number of megabytes that you want the database to grow by. I'm going to set mine to grow by 100 megabytes. This is going to be a small database growing infrequently. Never want to use this in percent, and for the most part, you're probably not going to want to limit the maximum file size to any sort of size indicator here. Just leave it as unlimited. When it is set for unlimited, it can fill the hard drive. But if you set it for a maximum size, once you hit that size, you're not going to be able to grow the database anymore. So users aren't going to be able to write new data into the system. This is typically a bad thing to have happen. We can do the same thing for our transaction log. Again, changing from percent to megabytes, and again, setting it for 100 megabytes. We'll set the file growth to an unlimited size, although granted that two terabyte limit is a rather large size to work with. By clicking OK, we would then apply the settings. But before we do that, let's go ahead and look at the script that SQL generates, and we can see exactly what's going to happen here. So we can see here that SQL has generated the script that we could use to also change the database size. It uses a simple alter database statement, specifying the name of the database, and then the modify file syntax. We then specify the name of the file, and then the size of the database file that we're going to grow to, as well as the file growth setting. Now you can see here we've got one command for each database file, and you can see a little bit different between the two. Let's roll over a little bit here. And you'll see that the max size for the transaction log has been set for unlimited. And this is because, don't forget, we had to change that setting from the two terabyte limit to unlimited. So if you have a file size limitation in there currently, you'll want to change that by using the max size. We can view the current database file sizes by looking at the sys.database files dynamic management. When we run this query, we're going to want to run it from the context of whatever database we want to look at. So I'm going to switch my context to the sample database and then click execute. We'll see we get two rows back. I'm going to go ahead and scroll over to the right here and we'll see the database size, the max size, and the growth setting. Now you'll notice these sizes are not the same numbers that we saw in Management Studio earlier. And the reason for that is that these sizes are in blocks, not in kilobytes or bytes. So you'll have to do the math to convert these back out. Now the only number here that does look the same is the growth setting for the transaction log. That's the second file listed here. And the reason for that is the is percent growth column over towards the right there is going to give you the indication as to why. And that's because it's a percentage, not a fixed size. So if we go ahead and run our SQL query here to change the database sizes, give that a second to run, back to our sample database context, and re-query the sys.database files, and we scroll over, the database size is now set for 12,800 blocks for both files, and the growth is set for that as well. 12,800 blocks, or the 102,000 kilobytes that we entered in our T-SQL script that we can see above. In summary, we've learned that database files should be pre-sized so that database growth isn't needed, or it's at least as infrequent as possible. I showed you how to do the growth through Management Studio and T-SQL. I'll let you explore PowerShell so you can see how to do database growing from within PowerShell. I've also shown you the auto growth settings within Management Studio and how to set those through both Management Studio and T-SQL. Always remember in a production environment, auto growth is a safety net and not a best practice.